Dear passengers, welcome to your flight with zero G. Today's destination, the truth. Please stay curious and enjoy the ride. Welcome and hello to Data Waypoint, zero G's very own podcast, where we talk about different um, data and AI related topics. Today we have a very special episode since we basically have a recording live from the Coding Wings for Gravity hackathon here in Cologne at the Eurowings headquarter. And what we have, basically what is all behind, we will discuss in a couple of seconds. I just want to welcome first our very two guests, Johannes Hansen, Managing Director of Eurowings Digital and CIO of Eurowings. Thanks for being here. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Great. Happy, happy to be here. Nice to hear. And our very own Managing Director, Manuel from CRG. Also, hello to you. Nice hello. to have you. Thank you for having me. Very welcome. And maybe just before we really start, uh, one quick introduction of myself, because frequent listener of this podcast might have noticed the actual moderator is now sitting right next to me. So today I will have the honor to lead you through the um, podcast recording. And my name is Francie, and I'm the marketing business partner at CRG. Okay, enough said. Let's start. So maybe Manuel, can you give us an like, idea what we're actually having today? So what, what's the event about? What was your mission about? And what is the actual unique thing of this hackathon? So I think what the unique thing is that we get the opportunity to work with um, airlines like Eurowings uh, and really bring tech people together with the airline experts and within a very short time frame, um, try and solve business challenges that airlines are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. And we do that collaboratively and in a relatively short time frame. So instead of pre preparing a lot of PowerPoint presentations on what technically and theoretically could be possible in the future, we actually uh, partner with the Johannes team and make sure that we actually deliver something, uh, as I said, within uh, uh, just two working days. And make sure that we get a lot of excitement around topics uh, that are related to data, data and AI, which sometimes are a little bit dry. But also make sure that we uh, creatively can collaborate and quickly adapt and change ideas before something is implemented in real life. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So we, we were talk, uh, you talked a lot about collaboration. Can you maybe give us um, some insights about why you basically brought your whole team here? So usually a hackathon is mainly like tackling one use case. We're tackling almost nine. So can you give us some insights about that? Yeah. Uh, obviously, we can also bring in a smaller team that is dedicated to just one use case or uh, have multiple teams tackling that same use case. But I think what is really nice is that uh, at Zero-G, um, we have the broader spectrum of expertise in different areas of airline management. And to really leverage that expertise also for, um, for Eurowings is to really bring in all of these experts together, um, sometimes working on their expertise, sometimes trying out something new that they have not worked on. Um, so imagine someone uh, being a data scientist on network planning projects, now getting the opportunity to work on something that is crew related. Um, so really also making sure that we are um, approaching different topics, uh, different ideas and different technologies uh, within this short time frame as well. And um, the actual reason is that it's also just a lot more fun to have the entire team here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to sum it up like it's a holistic approach, it's but the fun part is also very crucial for it, sure. It's holistically fun. It's That's holistically fun. Yeah, we can we can take that. Okay, thank you. Very nice. So Johannes, do you when you maybe want to give an like the perspective of Eurowings. So why did you actually decide to work with Zero G on the one mm -hmm. hand? And also what is the main reason to like fly in or let's say bring in all those um, data experts by train mm -hmm. to, to your headquarter? Yeah, let me elaborate a little bit. So uh, in, in Eurowings, to be fair, we had like really tough times that we went through with the turnaround and with the COVID situation and so on. And we finally now last year uh, successfully finished kind of the turnaround. So record year in terms of profit, reaching profitability, so having the whole company reorganized and set into new, uh, into new ways of working. And during those times of the turnaround, we had to work a lot on foundational stuff, technology stuff that is the foundation in order to make the business run. We did not have like the flexibility to work more on in innovation, driving the business forward and so on. It's, it was basically like fixing the basics and keeping the lights on. We now want to shift gears a little bit, if you will. I mean, we still have to work on the foundational stuff. This is also, will always be true, but we want to really kickstart the driving the business uh, with data and AI forward. And what better way to do this as a big symbol so that the whole company really notices it mm -hmm. because the whole headquarters is packed for two days and everyone sees that there are long lines in, in front of the headquarters there's lots of stuff going on. People are hacking. 
people who don't know what hacking is asking me like what is going on here so this is really like it's it's a, a, a turning point for us as a company in terms of how to use technology and everyone is really able to field so this is this is rather important and then it's a small cost to moving some people uh, over and organizing some events around it which is also kind of fun and then Obviously, Zero-G has the uh, expertise and the experience in aviation, is part of the Lufthansa Group, so there's a rather close, uh, uh, closer relation than to other uh, data science-driven companies outside the Lufthansa Group, so this was kind of a perfect match. Sounds pretty decent for sure, and especially what you said about making it tangible, so basically people can walk by and experience themselves mm -hmm. what it's like to actually work with CRG or what's happening on here. Um, thank you. So you touched base a, a little like slightly on each of you. So we said we have different use cases which will be tackled um, today. So maybe Johannes, you can start and um, like pick your three favorite ones maybe, and especially one which is more customer focused or customer centric, mm -hmm. and which you would say has the biggest impact, hopefully for um, Eurowings and Eurowings Digital. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to be fair, uh, all the nine use cases are really use cases that matter to the business. So they are all are like big business challenges where we can like really contribute to the bottom line if we have some insights there and, and, and contribution. And I would also like to emphasize that we are more in the experimental mode. So we know it's not deterministic. We probably won't be able to solve everything and so on, especially not in two days. But uh, we will try. We will try and see. And this is really valuable. And, and I think from my point of view, like the three most important ones, like one is the buy on board prediction, where it's basically you have the passengers, you always want to have a product on board. If the passenger is looking for a cold beer on the flight to Palma or for a vegetarian sandwich, if he's coming home in the evening from a business trip and so on, and you don't want to have too much on board. So we don't want to have waste. It's also not sustainable. We don't want to throw food away. And food is also like uh, heavy, so we would also consume more fuel. So we want to have the exact right amount of food in there. So I think this is, uh, in terms of the passenger experience one, uh, the, the most promising. Also very difficult logistics-wise. I mean, predicting what the demand would be is, is one side of the coin. The other is like, how do you react in the real world and move the product and so on. So um, this is a pretty good one. We have um, the no-show prediction where it's basically really important to see, okay, who of the passengers might not show up for the flight because this happens all the time. And then you have to off uh, offload the luggage. And if you already have a good indication, like what pa passengers have a high likelihood of not showing up, you have to organize the luggage in such a way that you can easily offload it and, and not get the flight delayed because this is like really expensive and also a bad customer experience. Um, and then the third one would be the estimated uh, time at the check-in, because if it's if it's not bu busy on a, on a business route and so on, probably you don't have a problem. Also, the business travelers don't use the check-in all too much because they will check in through the app. If you have touristic routes in the summer to Palma, lots of children, lots of baggage, and so on, there might be a rather high check-in time predicted, and then we could also like flexibly. Uh, use more agents, use more uh, check-in gates and so on, or scale them down. So that would also be really interesting to see if we can get better there in, uh, in terms of prediction. Yeah, totally makes sense. And I mean, you already mentioned that basically all of those use cases do have a great impact on the basically different processes, different departments at your wings. Mm -hmm. So could you maybe sketch like your ideal um, way of moving forward? So if you could basically say, well, the outcome of this hackathon should be X, Y, Z. And this is basically what I wish for for the future. So how would you, would you sketch that? Mm -hmm. Very open question, but mm -hmm. I, will, I will give you like a, a, an open answer as well. Um, so actually, we really made sure that we have like something for every part of the company. So not only focus on customer, not only focus on commercial, having ops processes and so on. Also something from finance, which I'm pretty happy about. And uh, from my point of view, we will see like hopefully many success uh, stories tomorrow during the, um, during the pitch presentation. And then afterwards, I think the real work only then begins because n none of this would be like production ready. You would have to do some engineering work. You need to uh, have a lot of data ingestion work and so on. So we would ideally start some projects out of this. Will it be nine projects? I don't know. I would be very happy. My personal threshold, actually I kept it a secret so far, is like if we have three good ones that we are going to move forward. Mm -hmm. 
this is going to be a big success. More than three, I would say, would be tremendous. So let's hope for three. It sounds pretty realistic. So what are your thoughts on that, Manuel? Well, I have the same threshold for success. So if we, <laughs> if we have one third uh, of the projects that we uh, started to work on uh, this morning, uh, actually make it into implementation and have an uh, impact on the bottom line and on the passengers for uh, for Eurowings, that would be uh, absolutely amazing. And I think it's great to know that Eurowings and Eurowings Digital are already building up the foundation to actually make these use cases work. So the data platform that Eurowings Digital is building called Minerva, I think is the backbone for any data-driven organization and um, uh, making sure that that data is available in a accessible and secure and properly governed environment will make sure that these deployments are also happening um, effectively and efficiently and can continuously be monitored and improved on. So I think currently the business uh, and IT are already building up the foundation for success. Um, then hopefully three of the use cases will be implemented. And then I think the most important part that we tend to forget um, uh, when it comes to data transformation is actually making sure that people's skills who have to start working with data, data tools and technologies also have a little bit of the self-confidence uh, that they can actually utilize these uh, these topics. So that's the reason why I'm also very happy that um, uh, together with Johannes's team as well as the uh, the um, uh, the airline management team here at Eurowings have a track dedicated to uh, data driven decision making and really identify where can data and uh, uh, AI have an impact on uh, airline passengers and have an impact for the airline organization. So bringing those th three things together, I think, is actually the way that we can hopefully mm -hmm. implement the three use cases that after tomorrow we've identified and move that forward. If I may touch upon something that you said, I think a, a large benefit of the whole event is also education and not of the zero-g or tech colleagues, but of the business people. Because to be fair, they all know about the business problems that they have. They are sometimes not even aware like what the technological capability is already, uh, um, what is already there that could help them. And I think we, uh, they will have a better understanding like after working uh, with the teams like what could be possible in the future uh, with the with the data platform that we have and also with like uh, data science in general as a discipline and i think bringing this together and and educating a broader employee population if you will is also a tremendous benefit and then hopefully we won't have like nine use cases going forward but there will be even more ideas uh, that, that are pretty valuable so a measure of success would be that we leave the hackathon with nine use cases and add 20 when we're at. Yeah, we're <laughs> meeting again. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Let's see. <Yeah. laughs> but maybe just picking up on like, a, um, I know like Siri G, we always say we do human-centric um, solutions, yeah. right? So, and each of you basically mentioned that in your in your um, answers. Maybe Marla, can you give us um, like a best case scenario or an example on how we basically make sure that those people on our journey, because we said like data is not the most sexy thing in the world and often it actually scares people, right? Because they see, oh, there's actually like an automation or whatever, which kind of like can maybe replace me. So how do we make sure that basically the Eurowings, the Eurowings digital team is involved in the whole process, and which would be like a good example on how this can be deployed or implemented? Yeah, I think making sure that people who are ultimately impacted by any application that they have to work on, whether it's a software solution, a aircraft, uh, but also definitely in the data in the ice sphere, I think it's important to have those people in the room uh, from the get-go. So at Zero-G, we always make sure that we uh, apply human-centric design um, um, methodologies and philosophies by making sure that whatever AI application we build, uh, be it in network planning, be it in revenue management, crew management, or airline operations, that the people who will ultimately be impacted by this are there. Yeah, so that they can give very clear statements on these are the kinds of challenges I have on a day-to-day -day basis. These are the kinds of opportunities I, I, I observe in a day-to-day -day basis. And this is how the process works for me. I think what happened back in the day is that a lot of software solutions, uh, data and AI solutions, were built uh, by engineers only. And there was a lot of technical ideas on how an idea uh, could be implemented or a solution could be created. But ultimately, you can have the best data tool or the best technology stack. If there is no one using it, it doesn't have an impact, mm -hmm. uh, which ultimately is also not satisfying for the engineers or data scientists who work on that project because they want to do something that has a business impact as well. So we've built methodologies to ensure that um, every time that we start a project, that we have the end users 
there as well. We do that through a, a data design sprint, for example, where we have a set steps, a set of steps uh, where we identify challenges, business opportunities, and technical reality, then identify and create certain so solution ideas, even if it's just on paper, um, but, but always check it then with the users as well. Mm -hmm. And ideally two different groups, right? So it's uh, um, um, uh, ground operations expert to be interviewed and part of the entire process. And then you have a different ground operations expert to make sure that you're testing the idea directly and ideally within uh, a, few, a few days. So you're not losing time and tracking as well. Because it's clear, I think, that people cannot always be a part of every step of the way because that will be too time consuming. But they have to be uh, part of the entire design exploration phase. The other way to make sure that you're building a human-centric solution is actually buying, applying data and AI, right? So I think the, that's, the, that's the beauty of, um, uh, of, um, of data analytics and artificial intelligence is that a lot of people might say as an airline manager, well, this is what our passenger wants, right? And then we're basically building something that an airline manager says is important for their passengers. But if you're actually utilizing data, you can understand more effectively what mm. does an airline passenger actually want. And you can personalize the entire journey and make sure that both the digital touch points and the physical touch points are catered and built up around their needs and iteratively tr try to improve on that as well. Mm -hmm. That needs a little bit of courage, I think, from airline managers that you are able to define a hypothesis and then basically test it out and try and improve on that continuously. But that's the other way that you can actually make sure that data and AI serves human needs. And it's not something that kind of like alienates people um, from human connection. I think those are the two main ways in which we are trying to make sure that we're building human-centric data and AI applications that actually ultimately serve people and have a positive impact on business as well. Well, thank you, Manuel. I think um, what makes it especially important what you said about customer centricity. So in the end, it's all about the customer, right? And if it serves the customer, you should somehow try to adapt to it. Okay, so we talked about the team, we talked about the challenges, we talked about the impact. One last thing I actually want to um, include in this little discussion here today is Johannes. Mm -hmm. So we often get like the critical questions. So yeah, well, the department people somehow understand what you do. Maybe the top management does understand what you do. But how do you ensure that basically all management levels are also on board and basically support what you have in mind? So do you have any certain strategy? any training, so how do you actually actually kind of like tackle this challenge? Mm. Yeah, actually, uh, this is a good one because this is, a, uh, this is a challenge. I believe there's no silver bullet of solving this. There's like a mix of stuff and, and you have to play like on all, on, on all the levers or you have to pull all the levers that you have at your disposal. I would say uh, a rather good way is to have cross-functional teams that are very empowered because if they are really convinced about the logic and so on and the solutions th that they come up with, they also convince their superiors typically. So this is rather powerful. I think the whole education space, like providing training and so on, providing peer exchange. We do a lot of peer schools in your wings. I think this is helpful. Um, and I spend a tremendous amount of my personal time of doing stakeholder management with the top management in order to emphasize like how important this all is, what the, what the possibilities are and so on. Uh, I think this is just necessary. And uh, I also think if you do all of those uh, things, you have like rather good chance. But there's no, there's no simple way, no button to push. Um, this is like, I mean, Basically, you're changing how an uh, organization operates. It's a big change process, so and this takes some, some effort and also some time. Like, yeah, makes sense. I mean, you can never have 100% certainty. This is probably something you will hear tomorrow for sure. <laughs> a couple, couple times from our data scientists. Um, well, yeah, I think that's basically it. Then thanks for joining. Thanks for taking the time. I hope everyone got a clear view on what we actually were doing here or are still doing here at the Sackathon. So thank you. And I'm very excited to see the pitches tomorrow. And yeah, let's see what the results of those hackers are actually going to be. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Catch you later then. Catch right. you all later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Dear passengers, thanks for choosing Zero G. We hope you had a great and informative flight. See you next time. <laughs>